Greetings, faithful friends. It is Thursday. I'm so pleased to be with you today. And I'm going to begin with Psalm 90. I'll read it from the message. So it might sound a little different from what you're used to. And I invite you to see if you can listen for the word surprise in this psalm. God, it seems you've been our home forever, long before the mountains were born, long before you brought earth itself to birth. From once upon a time to kingdom come, you are God. So don't return us to mud saying, back to where you came from, patience. You've got all the time in the world, whether a thousand years or a day, it's all the same to you. Are we no more to you than a wispy dream no more than a blade of grass that springs up gloriously with the rising sun and is cut down without a second thought? Your anger is far and away too much for us. We are at the end of our rope. You keep track of all our sins. Every misdeed since we were children is entered into your books. All we can remember is that frown on your face. Is that all we're ever going to get? We live for 70 years or so with luck, we might live it, make it to 80. And what do we have to show for it? Trouble. Toil and trouble and a marker in the graveyard. Who can make sense of such rage, such anger against the very ones who fear you? Oh, teach us to live well. Teach us to live wisely and well. Come back, God. How long do we have to wait? and treat your servants with kindness for a change. Surprise us with love at daybreak. Then we'll skip and dance all the day long. Make up for the bad times with some good times. We've seen enough evil to last a lifetime. Let your servants see what you're best at, the ways you rule and bless your children. And let the loveliness of our Lord, our God, rest on us confirming the work that we do. Oh yes, affirm the work that we do. And I'm continuing continuing this chapter in Brother David Stendhal-Rath's book on gratefulness and uh, how it brings fullness in our lives. And we will uh, move on to another subject tomorrow um, in the book. Intellect, will, and emotions each has a special role to play, and all three must harmonize in wholehearted gratefulness. We can now go a step further and ask, how, we, how can we become more grateful? We shall focus again in turn on intellect, will, and emotions as we look for ways of growing in gratitude. The first thing to remember is that is to start where we are. How can we start where we are not? And yet, how often we try to start way ahead of ourselves. That leads nowhere. But wherever we are, help is there. Life provides all the help we need. If we trust and look for it, we shall find it. Life is full of surprises. And surprise is the key to gratefulness. No matter how dull or intellectually trapped we are, surprise is close at hand. Even when our life lacks the surprise of the extraordinary, the ordinary always wants to surprise us afresh. As a friend wrote to me from Minnesota on a winter morning, I got up from dawn and caught God painting all the trees white. God's been doing much of God's best work while we sleep to surprise us when we get up. It is like the surprise we found in our rainbow. We can learn to let our sense of surprise be triggered not only by the extraordinary, but above all, by a fresh look at the ordinary. Nature is never spent, says Gerard Manley Hopkins, in praise of God's grandeur. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. The surprise of the unexpected will wear off but the surprise of that freshness never wears off. In a rainbow, it's obvious. Less obvious, the surprise of freshness is present in the most ordinary things. 
We can learn to see it as plainly as we see the powdery bloom on fresh blueberries. A mist from the breath of a wind, as Robert Frost calls it. A tarnish that goes at the touch of a hand. We can train ourselves to see that bloom of surprise by spotting it first where it's easiest for us to find. The child in us always remains alive, open for surprise, never ceasing to be amazed at something or other. It may be that I saw this morning morning's minion, Gerard Manley Hopkins, dappled dawn drawn falcon in his writing. Or simply it may be this morning's inch of toothpaste on my brush. Both are equally amazing to the eyes of the heart, for the greatest surprise is that there is anything at all, that we are here. We can cultivate our intellect's taste for surprise, and whatever causes us to look with amazement opens the eyes of our eyes. We begin to see everything as a gift. An inch of surprise can lead to miles of gratefulness. Suddenly, one day, the great surprise will break in on us, as in the following account from The Protean Body by John Johnson. I walked out onto a dock in the Gulf of Mexico. I ceased to exist. I experienced being a part of the sea breeze, the movement of the water and the fish, the light rays cast by the sun, the colors of the palms and tropical flowers. I had no sense of past or future. It was not a particularly blissful experience. It was terrifying. It was the kind of ecstatic experience I'd invested a lot of energy in avoiding. I did not experience myself as the same as the water, the wind, and the light, but as participating with them in the same system of movement. We were dancing together. It, in this great dance, Stendhal Rass says, Giver and receiver are one. We suddenly realize how little it matters which of the two roles one happens to play at a given time. Beyond time, our true self rests in itself in perfect stillness. Within time, this is realized by a graceful give and take in the dance of life. As in a fast spinning top, the stillness and dance are one. Only in that oneness is true self-sufficiency. Any other self-sufficiency is illusion, but the real is stronger in the end than any illusion. Sooner or later, it will shine through like the sun through fog. Life, our teacher, will see to that. Surprise is the starting point. Through surprise, our inner eyes are open to the amazing fact that everything is gratuitous. Nothing at all can be taken for granted. And if it cannot be taken for granted, it is gift. That is the weighty meaning of the expression we use so lightly when we speak of a given world. What we have mostly in mind when we speak of a given situation, a given fact, a given world, is that we cannot change it. But that can hardly be called mindful, with emphasis on the full, what we should also have in mind when we call something given is that it is a gift. True mindfulness gets that gift aspect of the world into view. When our intellect learns to recognize the gift as aspect of the world, when our will learns to acknowledge it, our feelings to appreciate it, ever wider circles of mindfulness make our world come alive. I have in mind the image of expanding ripples on the surface of a pond. The pebble that started them off is the little plot of surprise. As the ripples expand, we come alive. and In the end, gratefulness will be our full aliveness to a gratuitous, gratuitously given world. Let's pray together. God, we pray for a sense of surprise. In this world, there is so much to be surprised about. Not just the extraordinary, but the ordinary. We pray today 
that you might open the eyes of our eyes to see some surprises that we might have missed had we not been paying more attention. Paying attention takes a focused effort on being in the present moment. We pray, God, you will help us to do that so that we may know you and love you even more. As we do in Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you find some surprise in what you undertake today. Today, I'm grateful for a beautiful eagle I saw flying over the land down from the church here. Just gorgeous in the sunshine with that white head and tail soaring through the air.